A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 28, verses 1 to 10. After the Sabbath and towards dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala and the other Mary went to visit the sepulchre, and all at once there was a violent earthquake for the angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled away the stone and sat on it his face was like lightning his robe white as snow the gods were so shaken and frightened of him that they were like dead men. But the angel spoke, and he said to the women, There is no need for you to be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen as he said he would. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead. And now he is going before you to Galilee. It is there you will see him. Now I have told you. Filled with awe and great joy, the women came quickly away from the tomb and ran to tell the disciples. And there, coming to meet them, was Jesus. Greetings, he said. And the women came up to him and, falling down before him, clasped his feet. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers that they must leave for Galilee. They will see me there. 
the gospel, the good news of the Lord. He is risen from the dead. Words taken from St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, verse 7. On Easter Sunday morning, Jesus did not quietly rise from the dead, slip out of the tomb, and go away. St. Matthew creates a dramatic scene at the tomb where Jesus was buried. Mary of Magdala and another Mary had come to the tomb as daylight approached. And suddenly there was a violent earthquake and an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, rolled away the stone at the entrance of the tomb and sat on it. Matthew described how the guards who were protecting the tomb were so shaken and terrified that they were like dead men. The guards were in the right place but for the wrong motive. They missed the message of the tomb. They did not hear the good news proclaimed by the angel that first Easter morning. While the news was breaking all around them, they were asleep. The women, on the other hand, were not prepared to miss anything. They too were shaken up and afraid, but they received the assurance from the angel that there was no need to be afraid. The angel was a shining light and daylight had come. They could see. The angel knew why the women were there. They were looking for Jesus. Not finding him there in the tomb would be a great puzzle for them. And that was why the angel was sent. Angels are messengers. This particular angel was entrusted with the mission to transmit the good news of the resurrection. This was indeed great news. Could you imagine what it was like when Mary of Magdala and the other Mary heard that Jesus was not there in the tomb for he had risen? He had said to his disciples more than once that his suffering and death would lead to resurrection on the third day. Now scripture was being fulfilled and the angel said to the women, Come and see the place where he lay. At that moment, the shift took place from death to life. The tomb was for the dead. Jesus, who was crucified, was not there anymore. He had left the world of the dead. He had risen. The angel was there to help the women in this passage of belief. When John the Evangelist looked into the empty tomb, he said, 
that he saw and he believed. To comprehend the mystery of the resurrection requires faith. And so for the women, the journey of faith had begun. The empty tomb was not a puzzle but a statement of faith. Jesus is alive. I enjoy reading the sequence for Easter Sunday and Easter week. It is such a powerful witness of faith in the resurrection of Christ. Let me quote the final part of it. Tell us, Mary, say what thou didst see upon the way, the tomb the living did enclose. I saw Christ's glory as he rose, the angels there attesting, shroud and grave clothes resting. Christ, my hope, has risen. He goes before you into Galilee. That Christ is truly risen from the dead, we know. Victorious King, thy mercy show. Isn't that beautiful? Mary of Magdala and the other Mary responded to the good news with awe and great joy. When we look at something beautiful, we say, it's awesome. And when we are confronted by something mysterious, we say, it's awesome. The women had found themselves facing an event that was both beautiful and mysterious. They were now entrusted with this awesome news of great joy. As they ran to tell the disciples the good news, there was Jesus coming to them in Lent. In the third week, when we read the story of the woman at the well, there was a very beautiful line in that story where after the woman had had her encounter with Jesus and had gone to her village and began to spread the good news about this man that she had met at the well and all the things that he had said to her and the depth that he had gone into her life. And she asked, could this be the Christ? And the people accepted her testimony and witness and they went to meet Jesus. And St. John said in the text of that story, he described the people as walking to meet Jesus, coming to Jesus. And here we have in this story of the resurrection, Jesus walking towards the women. Jesus coming to meet them. There is a reversal. Jesus is risen. He is alive. And he is coming to meet his daughters in the faith. 
And this is Jesus for us, the, the Easter Jesus, the Jesus of the resurrection, is the Jesus who comes to us. He comes to us in word. He comes to us in Eucharist. He comes to us when we care for the poor. He comes to us in so many ways. And right now, on this Easter day, He comes to us and meets us in faith. As we believe in Him and call upon Him, He comes to us. The angel said to the women, Come and see. Come and see where he lay. It's empty. He is not there. And then they see him coming to them. And that walk is important in the journey of faith. Already filled with awe and great joy, at the greeting of Jesus, the women clasped his feet and did him homage. Jesus let them hold on to him. They believed. They saw him. They heard his voice and touched him. Now they were ready to spread the good news of the resurrection. They were witnesses of the resurrection. Now it was the Master himself who was sending them to Peter and the disciples with the good news that he had risen and that they were to meet him in Galilee. They were the first to be sent after the resurrection of Jesus as apostles and evangelizers. They ran to tell the good news. Easter is a celebration of the resurrection of Christ. Celebrating the resurrection is celebrating life, new life in Christ. Only God in Christ can raise us from the dead. No doctor can give us eternal life. That is the fruit of the resurrection. But Christ can. This should fill us with awe and great joy. At Easter, Catholic Christians renew their baptismal promises and thereby declare that we are a people of life. The culture of death is so pervasive today that we need to stand firm in choosing life. Life is precious and should never be cheapened or destroyed. At a global level, this is happening in the staged terrorist attacks that destroy so many innocent lives. There is also warfare, which destroys the lives of individuals and sometimes entire families. This is further exacerbated by the creation of a refugee crisis. The use of chemical weapons add to the atrocities of war and violence in our world today. No one should ever take pleasure in the destruction of human life. Life is sacred and must be respected and cherished. In St. Lucia, the Catholic Church has designated this year the year of the family. The family is
is the domestic church as well as the sanctuary of life. This means that the family ought to be a safe place for life in all its stages from womb to tomb. From conception to natural death. Presently, however, domestic violence is having a negative impact on the family in St. Lucia and is of great concern for the church. 50% of the 20 homicides for the year so far are related to domestic violence. This is violence in the home and in family relationships. We cannot tire of cultivating a culture of life and non-violence at every level of church life and in the family. We need to educate our people in conflict resolution and the values of life. So many of the choices people are making today are death choices. We need to call our people to be a people of life, to choose life and to respect life and the dignity of every human being. In this year of the family, I would like to see more families choosing life. I would like to see Catholic Christians becoming champions of life. Indeed, the entire nation becoming a people of life and cultivating a culture of life and non-violence in our homes, schools, and communities. I would like to see all our citizens answering the call to be peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. They shall be recognized as children of God. These words are taken from the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, verse 9. It is time to end domestic violence and indeed every form of violence. When we choose life, we can celebrate life. And Easter, the celebration of life, becomes a celebration of joy. Alleluia. Happy Easter. Some years ago, I, I wrote a, a song. I was inspired on Holy Saturday as I prepared my homily to, to, to write this song about these, the excitement of the women when they received the good news about Jesus risen from the dead. And I, I wrote words that maybe I, I'll be bold to, to sing a little bit of it for you. They were running and jumping and praising the Lord, running and jumping and praising the Lord. They were running and jumping and praising the Lord, running and jumping and praising the Lord. They had good news, good news to tell abroad. They had good news, good news to tell abroad. They had good news, good news to tell abroad. Good news about Jesus, the risen Lord. Good news about Jesus, the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, praise the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, 
praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. He suffered and died and he rose from the dead. He suffered and died and he rose from the dead. Hallelujah. It's Easter. And we say, Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Isn't it wonderful what joy puts into our hearts? And when we sing, we are, joy, we are a joyful people, an Easter people, an Alleluia people. This year, I should say this month of April, we are welcoming to St. Lucia and to the Archdiocese of Castries all the bishops of the English, French, and Dutch-speaking Caribbean. And also the Cardinal, Cardinal Felix, will be here. And our papal nuncio, the Pope's representative. So there will be about 23 bishops here for a special meeting. The 61st meeting annual general meeting of the bishops of our Antilles Episcopal Conference on Sunday the 30th of April at 4 p.m. there will be a pontifical high mass of thanksgiving at the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception. I would like to invite you personally to this. And we want representation from the entire Archdiocese, from every part, from every parish. We invite you to come and celebrate with the bishops and to welcome them to St. Lucia. After the Mass at the Cathedral, Penier Street from Mi between Miku and Brazil Street will be blocked off. And we are going to have a reception in that part of the street, of Penier Street. So you are invited to that as well, and that will give you an opportunity to meet the bishops, to say hello to them, to welcome them, and to play your part in welcoming in welcoming them to the church in St. Lucia and for their conference here. This is Easter time when we will be welcoming the bishops. So it will be a lovely time, a lovely season of grace and blessing. And you know what? Their coming here will also be a lovely time for our church, a blessed time for our church, a Kairos moment for our church, providential and favorable. To God be the glory. Amen. Remember the day? April, Sunday, April 30th, 4 p.m., at the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception. Let us fill the cathedral as we welcome our bishops to St. Lucia. Thank you. <laughs>